So Israel has nuclear weapons. But shh, don't tell anyone though. A yes, no question for you. Does Israel have nuclear capabilities and nuclear weapons? Yes or no? Uh, we've always said that we won't be the first to introduce it, so we haven't introduced it. But that's and not an answer to the question. Do you have them or do you not? Of any country. It's as good an answer as you're going to get. And some Israeli officials just disrespect the set when it comes to this topic. How many <laughs> nuclear weapons does Israel have? Because experts say it's anywhere between 80 and 400. So what? So, so what? what? Yeah, so what? So, so what? I'm still a rock star. But the real question is, how did Israel ever get nukes in the first place? And how did it cover it up for so long? Israel's nuclear ambitions date back to its birth and its first Prime Minister, David Ben-Gurion. He was obsessed with the idea of acquiring a nuclear deterrent to guarantee the survival of Israel. But would it have been impossible for this newborn state with its limited economic, technological and military power to pull this off alone? So Israel relied on material and expertise from other nations like the US, France, Germany, Britain and even Norway to become a nuclear state. Which is hilarious, because these nations are some of today's staunchest campaigners against nuclear proliferation. Israel even went as far as stealing nuclear secrets from its allies, who in turn turned a blind eye. Bruh, these men stole nukes, stole land, stole rights, they even tried to steal falafel and hummus. Allow it fam, just stop stealing stuff, you know what I mean? After France and Israel failed to overcome Egypt in the 1956 Suez Crisis, France worked alongside Israel to overcome their common foe. So France sent Israel some nuclear expertise in return for Tel Aviv providing intelligence on matters in Algeria, where France was fighting an anti-colonial rebellion. The French program was aided by sympathy from a large number of Jewish French scientists. By the end of the 1950s, France had sent 2,500 workers to the village of Dimona to help build Israel a nuclear reactor and a secret reprocessing plant. It got so peak, the village turned into a buzzing French town full of French Renaults and French high schools. But as you would expect, the whole project was shrouded in secrecy. According to American investigative journalist Seymour Hirsch, the French workers were, quote, forbidden to write directly to relatives and friends in France and elsewhere, but sent mail to a phony post office box in Latin America. In 1959, Britain and Norway also provided Israel with 20 tons of deuterium oxide, also known as heavy water. Both governments were suspicious that the material would be used to make weapons, but knowingly looked the other way. The BBC acquired documents in 2005 wherein British officials argued that it would be, quote, overzealous to impose safeguards. Israel was also receiving financial help from abroad, thanks to the efforts of Jewish American businessmen like Abraham Feinberg who is accredited for fundraising tens of millions of dollars for Israel's nuclear program. Other nations who supported Israel's nuclear bid include Argentina and South Africa's apartheid regime. But Israel didn't only buy material and expertise, they also stole it. Lakam is the name given to an Israeli spy ring which carried out these clandestine missions. Arnon Milchin, a billionaire Hollywood producer, accredited with hits like Pretty Woman, LA Confidential and 12 Years a Slave, was part of this Israeli spy network. Milchin, who was recruited in 1965 by Shimon Perez in a Tel Aviv nightclub, was, quote, responsible for securing vital uranium enrichment technology, photographing centrifuge blueprints that a German executive had been bribed into temporarily mislaying in his kitchen. Funny story, actually. The same blueprints were stolen a second time by a Pakistani employee, Abdul Qadir Khan. The blueprints were used to found Pakistan's enrichment program and were also sold to Libya, North Korea and Iran. And this is why Israel was able to hack Iran's nuclear sites in 2010. Because, well, it has the near identical centrifuges. So basically, these guys are beefing and stealing the same shit. <laughs> there has been several times in the past where Israel's nuclear weapons program has been exposed. In 1986, Mordecai Vanunu, an Israeli nuclear technician, leaked photos to the British press revealing Israel's nuclear weapons program. He was subsequently lured to Italy by the Mossad, drugged and abducted back to Israel. He spent 18 years in jail, 11 of those in solitary confinement. And despite the clear-cut evidence, Israel continued its policy of nuclear ambiguity. In 1979, an American spy satellite picked up flashes of an Israeli nuclear test in the South Atlantic. But they then covered it up. According to Foreign Policy magazine, the US president at the time, Jimmy Carter, consciously buried the intelligence, not wanting to jeopardize the Egyptian-Israeli peace treaty, the US backing of Tel Aviv, and his re-election. 
You know how this goes. Captain America comes in and covers up for its good pal Israel. I'm not looking for forgiveness. And I'm way past asking permission. Israel today is estimated to have around 80 to 400 nuclear warheads. It is not a signatory of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. And UN inspectors are not allowed to visit its nuclear sites. We live in this world of an Iranian nuclear crisis, which Israel and its allies keep reminding us of. But Iran doesn't have nuclear weapons. Now, some may say that Iran has shown that it can't be trusted to act responsibly through its misadventures in Syria, Yemen, and Iraq. Well, what about Israel? And what it's done to Lebanon, Gaza, the West Bank, Egypt, Syria, and Jordan if we go a few decades back? So why are we speaking about an Israeli nuclear crisis? Or even an American nuclear crisis, since they're the only ones that actually went and used it. Look, the reality is nuclear weapons are more than just the ultimate deterrent. They are a tool of coercive foreign policy, and most of all, a symbol of prestige and power in international politics. But an exclusive club of nations doesn't want others to have it. A form of nuclear racism, if you will. Or a bit like that older guy in the neighborhood who comes and bullies you when he sees you and your friends smoking while he's holding a cigarette in his hand. So guys, what do you think about all of this? Should we all have nuclear weapons or should no one have it? Let me know what you think and you know what time it is. Subscribe, like, share. Ramadan Kareem as well.